go for it. Hi everyone, good morning. I'm here, I'm Ursula Averitt, I'm the VP of Marketing here at Pantheon. And today we have Josh Koning, our co-founder for Pantheon. And we're talking about uh, Multidev, our latest product feature that we, we, we launched last Wednesday. So today we'll spend around 30 to 35 minutes on the presentation as well as a demo. We'll spend most of the time on the demo, 20 minutes on the demo, and then we'll have a ton of Q&A um, time available for you. The best way to reach us for Q&A is either through Twitter at Get Pantheon or just in the chat in the GoToWebinar panel. Um, we will be recording this webinar, so um, that'll be available to you guys all tomorrow. Without further ado, I'll pass you on to Josh. Cool. All right, I'm going to enable headphone mode. Give me one second. Find people. All right. And I'm assuming since no, there's not a flood of questions about hearing me that everyone can hear just fine. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about multi-dev, which we are super excited about. This is the most requested feature on Pantheon uh, over the past year since we've showed this, uh, you know, our tool set on our dashboard to a lot of professional developers, development agencies, people whose job it is to build, you know, websites within their company or organization. They love Pantheon, they love what it can do for them, but then they want this extra set of features um, that are kind of obvious when you think about it. And we've, uh, we've listened and we've worked very diligently and now we have delivered them as multi-dev. So, a little bit about Pantheon, you know, we and how we see the world. Our mission is to power the world's Drupal websites. We are trying to remove infrastructure and system administration as impediments for adoption of Drupal um, and uh, save organizations time, money, hassle, headache, stress, and all the other things that come along with the good side of open source software so that more people can use this wonderful tool to build amazing websites, make the internet a better place, make the world a better place, and everybody wins. Um, and we do that basically by doing a lot more than what traditional infrastructure or hosting companies do. We think very differently than a hosting company, and we've built something technologically very different from a hosting company. We take care of your hosting needs, but we also take care of the operating, the dev tools and workflow, scalability, and now uh, you know a number of other features. It's not just you're getting a box somewhere. It's Pantheon basically takes away your need to think about servers at all when you're dealing with Drupal, which can be a wonderful uh, paradigmatic shift for, for you guys out there. Um, and we're making it essentially much, much easier to build, launch, and then run these websites. That's all soup to nuts. From cradle to grave, we have an answer basically to everything from how do you get a project set up with version control and a development workflow. And a development workflow, and how do you, um, you know, how do you, how do you have a successful launch event? How do you launch on time? How do you run and scale? How do you handle Drupal updates? We have answers to all these questions. So this is kind of how we see the world. Anyway, and we've built the world's largest single Drupal infrastructure, so we can basically scale you from a dev site sandbox to 100 million page views literally in minutes, um, without having to provision new servers, without having to do system administration tasks, without room for human error. Um, and if you want to know more about how the technology works, we can talk about it later. Um, there will probably be other webinars in the future where we dive more into the nuts and bolts. But just that's kind of how we roll. Um, and it's working. You know, we've launched, we've got over 30,000 sites launched on Pantheon, and that includes some big names and some big brands and uh, a lot of development sites and a lot of development projects as well. Um, and, uh, and, you know, something like 16,000 developers, 30,000 sites. People tend to do more than one site. Once they start with Pantheon, they want to use it for more and more of the projects because the, the tool set is really amazing and it helps people be more productive. So let's talk about Web development. I mean, that's our world. That's where we come from. That's the, the problem we're trying to solve. Um, we're about you know, 20, 20 years into the web, um, almost exactly. There was a big to-do because the original CERN.org uh, website was restored or, and, uh, in time for the 20-year anniversary. And, um, and the state of the art in web development is, in, in weird ways, not evolved as much as you would think it would have over the past 20 years. And in other ways, it's kind of become fragmented. Um, this is a little, you guys can't probably read all the text on here, but this is an infographic we made to sort of tell the story we'll be releasing in a, in a week or so, probably after we review it one more time for typos. <laughs> um, 
but uh, but I'll tell you what I mean. So FTP is still a top tool for web developers. I mean, this is you know hopefully you're using SFTP, so you're not transmitting everything in the clear, but it's the same basic model of I'm going to copy files from point A to point B, and a lot of websites still run on. Um, still run on a very uh, uh, traditional model of, you know, people literally copying files into a live production environment onto some server in some directory or editing them directly on the server to, you know, build and maintain the websites. And that's, that's how it's been done forever. And that's the easiest and most like simple way to do it. But that has so many drawbacks. And I probably don't need to get into that with you. But you know, the, the fact that modern, modern processes like version control um, and deployment and continuous integration and being able to, to actually work in a distributed environment, you know, these are relatively new and still haven't uh, really matured and gelled and taken over the industry. Um, you know, people, this is a, a, a meme that's popular with uh, developers, but it's it's all too true sometimes, right? I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. And when you make a mistake in that kind of model, it can be pretty costly. And it can also make deploying code be very high stress. I, I think one of the things that's really a shame about this, you know, continuing anti-pattern isn't just that people inevitably do make a mistake. We're human, that's what we do. And then there's a real world consequence, but that people get afraid to try to make changes because they don't want to make that mistake. And then you have your your web presence becomes more and more limited and stale. Um, and without the freedom to actually test and deploy and to be you know aggressive and move fast like that, you will start to lag and things will be less cool. Um, so copying files to live is, seems like a fast way to get things done. But I think in the long run, it just slows you down because of the fear. Um, and local dev, right? Local dev is very cool. And it's sort of like emerged in the past three, four years four or five years, I guess, really, as a, as a potential solution to this. But it's also totally an incomplete solution and in some ways leaves, you know, a lot of, uh, creates a lot of problems that, along with the ones that it solves because it's very difficult to manage local development, right? It just, from a project management perspective, it's, it's not so good. Um, most of these tools that people have are not real software. It's not like Photoshop where you install it on your computer and you have everything you need to, to like, run up, you know, do your image uh, manipulation. You're, like, kind of, it makes everyone into a sysadmin, like rather than trying to make it easy for people to just develop and work in a distributed manner, it sort of puts a burden on every developer to maintain the set of tools on their uh, on their own. I'm not seeing slides. Oh, well, that's no fun. Oh, because I never clicked that button. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Hey guys, now you can see my slides, huh? <laughs> Um, I'll just show them to you real quick since you were all listening. So here's a beautiful picture of San Francisco right outside our office. Here's how we look at the world in terms of the things we take care of and what traditional sort of the old school web 1.0 world of hosting does. Um, we're making it easier by building the world's largest single Drupal infrastructure that serves billions of uh, requests a month. Um, it's working for a lot of people and uh, large and small. And we think that's very exciting. And now we're taking on this, this real, you know, this big uh, question of, uh, of, of web development. So this is the infographic that we'll release and you'll be able to read the fine print. Um, and here's some FTP icons, tools that I actually still use too. I'll admit it, I use Cyberduck. It's going to be in my demo because sometimes that's what you need to use. Um, and here's the most interesting coder in the world who only tests his code in production. And uh, here's some great uh, icons slash logos of local development tools. But here's the problem with local development um, is that it does turn everyone into a sysadmin because you are now maintaining a web stack on your laptop in addition to whatever your development tools are, your your IDE, your version control, and all this other stuff. And it's a lot of burden because it's not really all like solved. It's not wrapped up into a package. Um, and you also have this issue of platform fragmentation because it's very rare that a local development environment is a good representation of what your actual production and deployment environment is because your laptop it, you know, a lot of us use a, a Mac or PCs. Those are going to run a different operating system, chances are, than what you deploy to. Uh, the versions of all the different, like, softwares and libraries every, all the way through that can also be uh, sources of potential gotchas. And and when you have everything going on on someone's personal equipment, it's kind of in a black box. Like, it's very difficult to share your work with other people. You can't just say, oh, hey, here, look at this. I did it. Unless you're in the same room, you can't collaborate, really, um, because you have to put it somewhere on the internet before you can actually you know, get sign-off or approval. 
I know it also sometimes drives project managers crazy because they're like, I don't know what's been going on. It's, it's in local development and, um, and that can be a challenge and you run risks of, uh, you know, like people's laptops get stolen or they they leave and then the work goes with them. Um, so local development, while I think it's a big step forward and it's empowered a lot of developers and, and does a lot of great things, it's still really not the answer. Um, and so we think, you know, part of the, the full answer and the fullness of time is what we're calling multi-dev. And basically, rather than thinking about local development, we're thinking about cloud development environments. And that the Pantheon standard workflow is the, the, the sort of workflow trifecta that you all are probably familiar with by now. It's dev, test, and live. You do your code work in dev and your, your site's running in live, and you bring the code and the, the whatever's latest and freshest on the site together in test to make sure that you can deploy. And that is a best practice. There are certain pain points with that in Drupal, but that's just inherent to the platform. Doing it that way lets you deploy without a lot of fear, and then you know you can do it on a platform like Pantheon, where your dev environment is exactly like your live environment, and you know you can scale it. And that's great, but if you have a team of developers, which most serious projects do, the one development environment is a total bottleneck, right? It's really not all that, it's not all that awesome because you, you can only have one person use it at a time, really. Um, people can step on each other's toes. It can, it can slow things down. You can end up accidentally overriding someone else's work. Um, that's just a bad situation to be in. Plus, you're also not able to take advantage of the really good uh, tools that are out there in terms of being able to use uh, uh, feature branching and other version control workflows. Um, you have challenges figuring out when it's safe to push code out because maybe something's being reviewed. Like having a test environment is great, but if you've got more than one thing happening, if you're trying to operate a large project and run in parallel, you need to be able to review more than one thing at a time. And so you can end up in this kind of traffic cop, traffic jam situation with the deployment workflow sort of tying things up. So Pantheon Multidev basically says, don't be stuck with one development environment. There's still kind of like a common place where everything comes together, and you sort of treat that as an integration environment, if you will. But you should be able to run as many development environments as you want. And you know that, that could be for a feature branch. It could be a personal sandbox. It could be for QA. It could be for training. You know, you want to spin something up to give the a new staff member the freedom to go and kind of reek their way through Drupal without messing with anybody else. That's a perfect use case for, for a multi-dev cloud development environment. Um, and so this is kind of obvious once you get started using Pantheon. Like, we should have this feature, and thank goodness, now we do. So the light has shown in. Um, this is something people have been asking for literally from day one. And it, we think it's a game changer because it eliminates these uh, common things that sort of can actually cause projects to get delayed and not launch on time or miss their budget goals or all these other things that you don't want to deal with. Like people say, it worked on my machine. Those are like the worst words to ever come up in a developer meeting. Nobody feels good saying that. Nobody feel good, feels good hearing that. But that's the source of so much friction in projects sometimes. Um, you know, you find yourself putting your best energy, your best engineering time and effort into maintaining the tool chain rather than using it to build something. So like you're wrangling with MAMP or your other local development infrastructure, or you've got somebody who's basically full-time doing Puppet and Vagrant to try to keep everybody else productive. That doesn't really scale because that's hard work and not a lot of people can do it. Um, you'll have common problems with like out of sync dev databases. Like when, it, when it's hard to synchronize with the rest of the team, people don't end up doing it because that friction is annoying. And then if you don't synchronize with the rest of your team, you end up in situations where your pieces don't fit together. And that last mile of a project can be such a pain when things aren't fitting together. The, the work of different developers isn't fitting together. The platform isn't fitting together. And you're under deadline pressure. And that's just a situation that nobody wants to be in um, when, you're, when you're doing, uh, doing a project, trying to get to a launch. Um, you know, if you're, if you're deploying new features after launch, you know, if you cross your fingers and hope that the code will scale or that it'll work in production, um, that's a, a bad situation to be in. Again, finding those last minute bugs from platform differences or, or other, otherwise getting off track. Like, it's not even just for coders. Again, like, if you have to kind of delay QA because there's no stable place to test something or delay development because you need to stop work so that something can be QA'd, that's just not good for your project timeline. And, and honestly, in, the, in 2013, in the world we live in, you should be able to operate in parallel. We have the technology. Let's just do it already. So I'm going to demo. Um, so here you see the Pantheon uh, dashboard. I'm just using my personal account here to demonstrate this and have enabled multi-dev for one of, uh, one of the sites on here called multi-dev sneak peek. 
Um, and uh, you, you've probably seen this if you've logged into Pantheon lately, that there's a new tab available over here called Multi-Dev. And basically, you know, in addition to dev, test, and live, you now have this new area you can, you can dive into. So we could go over here into Multi-Dev, and you can see I've got three um, current cloud development environments. Um, I have a, a, a one where I'm doing a feature branch and one where maybe I'm looking at adding a new theme and then this other one that I was using to demo to someone yesterday. So uh, creating a new one of these is really easy. So I can just make a new webinar, multi-dev. And this runs typically at the speed of Pantheon, you know, so it takes about 60 seconds, 90 seconds to create a new one. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just let that happen in the background and jump right into the feature B multi-dev cloud development environment. And so each, as you can see, it's a fully fledged Pantheon development environment. You have all the same tools as before. You can enable New Relic. Um, you know, you can, you can put a, a password on it. You can get direct connection info. You have your choice of working with SFTP or Git mode. Um, so again, like if you, you don't have to, you can, you can have multi-dev uh, environments for mirroring existing local development and people can just be pushing code up someplace so that they can share their work. Or you can turn it into a way of saying, okay, well, we can just create a cloud development environment for each developer. And if they're not comfortable with version control, everyone can sit here and use their SFTP clients and make the commits there and then merge them together. And it's a full stack, right? We're, we're not just forking the code and creating a branch. We're actually creating a completely independent first class stack on Pantheon for this environment. And so they all get their own URL with a similar pattern that you're probably familiar with where that's like, instead of dev, it's feature dash B because that's what I called it, dash the rest of the site name. And uh, in, in future iterations, if you are, uh, if you're um, want to, you can put your own domain names on these and so forth. And so, um, just to show you the power of this, right? This is a Panoply demo install and I've created a new page over here, which is, um, uh, being driven by a feature. So I basically created a panel pane and featureized it and exported that, and that's now part of the code base. And if I wanted to customize it, it's a couple of videos that are pretty cool. This is our, our Drupal can video and good old Leroy Jenkins. Um, you know, I don't think this is very interesting. Like we're kind of getting, it's, it's superfluous. So we're, we're getting right to the point here. And, and Leroy Jenkins, although I love him, is kind of off topic. So let's remove that. And then I'm just going to go, um, I'm going to add a, uh, well, let's just add a content list, right? Just to have something else on the sidebar. Veggies too, right? And with the power of Panoply, that's right there. This is this is just you know what you can do with Drupal's and panels when when it's set up correctly. Um, this is all set up, and then since this is a multi-dev environment, here's what I'm going to do, right? I have it in SFTP mode, which means I can use Drush to manipulate this environment directly. I'm going to go into my terminal. And I'm going to do, um, remember my site alias name, that's this one. So every, every multi-dev environment can be addressed directly with Drush. And I'm going to do uh, Drush, oops, I didn't copy that correctly. Copy Drush features, get the list of features that are on in that environment. All right, and I can see that my multi-dev demo um, uh, is uh, is here, and it's uh, it's called multi-dev demo. It's enabled and it's overridden because I just made changes to something that it controls. And I'm going to derive in myself uh, what the right command is, whether it's export or update. Features export, yes. So then I could do features. Export multi dev demo. Oops. Let's see if I can just do it this way. Sorry, guys. I should have had this in a script. Oh, features update all. That's what I want to do. Yeah.
And on the back end, it's going to go ahead and go through all of my features and write out anything that it needs to um, be written out into the module so that then I can share the changes that I've made to the feature. Um, if I jump back into my dashboard, you can see that the, the changes are already showing up here as, as Drush is writing them out. Um, and then I'll be able to see what's actually going on here. And so I've been playing around with this site. And so there's a number of other things that are going to go in there. But uh, as, a, as the info files have been updated and everything else. So all the changes in my features are now being written out to, uh, to the file space. And you can see them as they're happening. And it'd be nice if it gave me a little progress while I was doing this. But as you can see, these are going in there. I'm going to let it finish because I don't want to like sort of cut it off in the middle. Um, but this is the the primary changes we made here were to this uh, multi dev pages default. That's going to be update the sort of content that was in there. Oh, it's done. Okay, great. So then I can say features update with new video page. And now we can see that this has been turned into a commit in Git. It's showing up in my list of unmerged commits in this multi-dev environment. And you know, if you, again, just like with anything else on Pantheon, if I wanted to inspect this, I could and go load all of the diff of uh, the, the code that was there. And now in my dev environment, in my dev, main dev environment, I now have this merge uh, section. And I can see that there's unmerged changes from feature B. And it's going to give me the step-by-step, -step, uh, uh, you know, the commands for Git to be able to merge these in. And we're working on a way we should have uh, released pretty shortly that if it's a fast forward merge and we can detect that there's no possibility of a conflict, we can do it for you. Um, and uh, if you're syncing frequently between environments, conflict should be very rare. So the idea here, again, is to remove the friction and make it very easy and kind of the, the de rigueur everyday uh, practice to be frequently syncing with everybody else who's working on the site, because that way you avoid divergence, you avoid conflicts, and you avoid risk. But I could do the same thing here on my command line in my other terminal where I have this. So I can do git fetch origin, and that will pull all the changes down. And then I can do git checkout master. Oh, that was already on master. And just to be safe, let's make sure that I merge anything in there. It's already up to date. That's good. Now I'm going to merge in the, the stuff from feature B, where I've just committed those feature changes, and git push origin master. OK. And now if I go into the dev environment, And I log in. Uh, so you can see I don't have my tab, but it's because this one doesn't have the feature enabled yet. So if I go to structure features, I believe I put this in here, and I can just go enable this feature. And now we have the feature-driven page. Oh, it's missing a piece of content. But as you can see, the 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 feature here showed up. And this is, um, you know, features sometimes has a little bit of uh, eccentricity around how everything in particular gets exported. Um, but that's an example to, sh to show you of how you can use multi-dev and version control and features to begin really pursuing this sort of best practice based Drupal development. Um, you can also use it if you needed to do something like a, uh, uh, if I was going to go over here to the webinar thing, 
the and this when I uh, uh, forked it forked it off of dev. So supposing you know in my in this environment you know nothing has changed and it hasn't uh, hasn't been pulled any of that content in. So or any of those code changes in I should say. And so now I can continue to operate in this environment and I could be looking and saying okay well let me make sure that the great vegetables page is fine. And I know that the feature that's being worked on and that was being pushed into the master branch for review or integration with other other stuff is not going to interfere in any way with this page. So you could have review and sign off happening in the webinar environment while development continued somewhere else. And similarly, if you have um, uh, this will provide a, a great workflow for people where if you have a lot of work in, you know, in almost ready to deploy, but not quite there in master, and then there's a tiny CSS bug in the live environment or something like that, multi-dev will provide avenues for doing a hot fix workflow where you can quickly cut a new branch, fix that CSS bug, and deploy that sort of around the existing uh, uh, main development environment in order to get a quick hot fix out. Um, that is pretty much the the demo of uh, of the basic uh, multi dev functionality and there's a lot of other things obviously that you can do with this and we're one of the things we're actually very excited about is to see what people end up doing in terms of the 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 other use cases they they imagine but uh, again the workflow that we're trying to enable here is a very best practice very straightforward process of being able to pursue development in various different environments. Um, merge them together into master, check them there to make sure they integrate, and then follow the existing best practice deployment system. Um, so, oh, demo? Should we take questions now or should yeah, I go through that? Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to change my audio settings so that we can go back to speaker. Okay. Great. So the first question I have is from Sarah. Will you support dev environments that get branch names longer than 11 characters in the future? Yes, absolutely. For people who have been using multi-dev uh, on, on our first release, you've noticed there's an annoying limitation at this moment where the environment name is limited to 11 characters. Um, that's something that we will get fixed. That, that's, uh, we realized this it was, uh, in our own process came up a little bit later in the, uh, the QA cycle that there was potentially bugs with longer names. And we realized that the only way to be dead sure that they would always work was if we limited it to 11 characters for now. But obviously that's not a fun limitation and, uh, and we'll, we will resolve that and, and get that released in, in an upcoming bug fix. Great, so the next question I have is from Josh. So merging databases is dependent on features? So merging databases isn't possible, and it never will be possible, and we should all give up the fantasy that you can merge a database. Um, it's just, it's not something databases are built to do. Um, it's not something that Drupal is built to do. What you can do with features is you can export the configuration of your site into code. Like if, um, if I jump back to that, one of those dashboards, right? Um, and now it's been merged, so it's in dev. So if I jump back in here and give this big old diff a second to load, um, you'll be able to see what um, is actually in there. Or actually, you know, an even better way to do it. If you've never seen the inside of a feature, I encourage you to uh, to give it a look. So I'm gonna just gonna go into sites, all modules, multi dev demo, right? So that oh, I I think I should be sharing this. Oh, it's not showing up for you. Oh, it's just behind. Yeah. Okay. I was moving a bit too fast. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to uh, open up this uh, multi-dev demo pages default.inc. Um, this is one of the files that the features module creates. Um, and basically what this is doing, let's go to your focus here. Basically what this does is it exports all of the configuration of the panels page manager um, into from the database into a piece of code like this so that you can then deploy it. Um, uh, and the, the C-Tools exportables covers a lot of things and there's a few other things in the features module that, that uh, Drupal can do in terms of strong arm and there's even ways to get some, some minimally exportable content if you really need that. But it's uh, it's not a it's not that you're merging your databases. It's that you're taking the things that are in the database as a result of clicking around Drupal and using tools like features to export them to code. 
Um, when I was doing a lot of this type of development, I would usually use features as a kind of a starting place. And then I actually, because I'm a much more of like a hands-on developer, I would get in here and start messing around with this, the content of these files directly, which can be very powerful, um, but you, know, you have to kind of know what you're doing in order to get there. But I encourage anyone who's interested in doing features-based development to look into the contents of what features it's creating and understand how it works, because that gives you a much better sense of what will work always, what will work sometimes, and what you'll have to find a workaround for. Cool. The next question I have is from Amy. So how does the support and integration work with Solera and Redis within Multidev? So that, that's the beauty of, of Multidev in our, in our opinion. Uh, and I think one of the most important things about it is that every Multidev environment is a first class Pantheon stack, right? You have access to all the tools you would have in dev and test and live and they're dedicated. You're not sharing a database. You're not on like some Tinker Toys like small underpowered thing for just a dev sandbox. It is the same infrastructure that you would get in any Pantheon environment. And that means you have access to all the same tools. So if you're doing solar development work, every time you create a multi-dev uh, and you fork off a multi-dev, we'll fork off a new solar core. We'll fork off a new Redis cache. We create a new database. You get a, a completely dedicated file system for that. And that's really the, the power of it. It's not just forking the code. It's forking the whole, effectively, everything that would be in the data center around to support that code and make it run. And you can do development against that and know that the stuff that you develop in a multi-dev environment, because it is the same stuff that you're going to deploy on, is going to work. Great. So a question from Damien. How do you keep the content in the database synchronized between the different Drupal instances? For example, I edit a node on my server. How do I push this to the other instances floating around? So there are workflows that you can do here. And again, um, the, uh, I want to be clear that we're, we, we have not created something so magical that it can solve you know, what are core problems and, and challenges you face doing Drupal development. So there is no way without really specifically building your site to do so to say, push one node from one site to another. You, you can do that with a deployment module or with a services-oriented workflow, but that's very much dependent on how you've built your site. What Pantheon allows you to do between multi-dev environments is the same thing it allows you to do between dev, test, and live, which is to synchronize them using our workflow tools. So if I wanted to go into the, you know, the webinar environment here and pull the database from live, I could, but I could also pull it from any of the cloud development environments that are there as well. So suppose there was some, you know, somebody had done some very important work over in the crunchy environment and I needed to pull that in, I would just be able to click a button here and have that happen. To be clear, that will overwrite all of the content and configuration that's currently in this environment, and that's by design, because that's the only way that you can be sure that it will work. And so you have to then have a process within your team where you are basically frequently, what I would recommend is treating the, the anything that is worked on in a cloud development environment as part of multi-dev as, in, in terms of database, as disposable. You wanna be doing that work to sort of either test something, develop a new feature, build a new module, install something, but then what you want to do is, 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 you know, once you have it working, you want to commit it, you want to merge it, and you want to get it deployed out, and then you want to sync your database back from some, uh, some additional, some, some sort of higher up, more authoritative source. Great. So Josh Lilly has a great question. When are we going to have access controls permission? It'd be great to give people access to a specific environment and not the entire project. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's the most requested sub-feature of sub multi-dev. Um, and, it's a, and it's kind of an obvious thing. Like right now on Pantheon, we've, for the sake of building a project, product that's simple and, uh, and really fits a lot of use cases, we've opted for a very flat and al almost non-existent permission schema. There's a, sort of a special set of powers that are only available to the owner of a site. Um, so actually on the, if I go into this, the multi-dev uh, sneak peek, and I, you look at the team, I actually made Jeff, uh, my colleague here, the owner. So I, you know, I can't remove him from the site, only he can delete it and a few other things. But basically we treat the team as a team that's going to trust each other and everybody is allowed to do pretty much anything on the site. And clearly that doesn't work for a lot of use cases where, you know, you have someone that you're trying to train and part of training is recognizing that they're going to be less experienced and you really want to be able to tell them, no, go for it. Don't worry. You can't break anything. That's hard, to, that's hard to say with confidence if you know that they can like deploy code to the live environment. 
Similarly, you have a lot of projects where you know there's some of the team is working for a development shop, some of the team are working for a client, maybe there's a couple subcontractors involved, and being able to um, have being able to feel confident about giving access to just people who aren't a core part of the team is, is going to be a really big win. So we are aware of that as a, as a direly needed feature and are working on it. It will probably be released sometime this summer, knock on wood, but we don't have a specific uh, launch date set for it yet. Great. The next question I have is from Carson. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to make one of these multi-dev environments available to be used with a debugger? Ah, so like you want to be able to, to hook up xDebug uh, so like you can have your local IDE like Eclipse or whatever um, be able to, to use those tools and, and, and definitely um, that's something that we get requested a lot it's uh, but it's it's not uh, it's like an order of magnitude less than the other feature requests we talked about uh, we, we totally understand this is important because you know for more advanced developers this is one of those things that if you can't use a real debugging tool um, and in your IDE, especially if you're an IDE oriented developer, then you're kind of fighting with one hand tied behind your back. So uh, we're, we're, we feel that pain and that's something that we, we want to be able to do. We'd actually like to be able to allow you, if you chose, to turn debugging on in any environment. I wouldn't recommend it for live, but if you really wanted to, you could. Great. Okay. So a question by Josh. Is there any potential for conflicting mergers from Sandbox to Dev at the same time? No, there's no potential for um, for like a, a, a race condition, and that's just because Git is smart, right? Because we're using a central bare repo, um, once someone starts to do a merge, that takes out a lock, and then in, someone else tries to merge, it's going to say you can't because it's locked. Um, so you can't have two people push at the same time and then get like a, a sort of a collision there. Somebody's going somebody's gonna to win the race, and then the other person will have to wait and most likely pull whatever was just pushed, make sure that it doesn't conflict with anything they have, and then they can push their changes. Um, and that's just, you know, we're, that's not anything we've done that's special. That's just smart use of Git. Great. So this is a common question that I've gotten a couple of times. So how do I convince my client to switch over to Pantheon Multi-Dev? Right now, it's only available in the business plan and above. Yeah. What's your advice, Josh? Well, I think the way to look at it is... Um, is from an overall project perspective and, and kind of thinking in terms of, uh, you know, if you, if, if people are, if you have a team of people who are being paid to work on the site, then having tools that will save them time and make them more productive is worth investing in. And that's why, you know, this type of workflow is, is the sort of thing that, you know, if you went in off and, and built it on your own, you would, you know, be assembling a lot of pieces, you would be spending a lot of time on it, you'd be spending a lot of time maintaining it, and that's time that's not spent working on the project directly. Um, and so, uh, you know, I feel pretty confident that the amount of effort that's being saved by, uh, you know, just being able to turn on something like multi-dev with the click of a button and be able to get access to all this power is, you know, should be should be well worth the, 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 the price. You know, if you just think about what typical Drupal developers um, charge, you only have to save like five minutes a day across a team of three people and it's, you know, you're, you're more than saving $400 a month. Great. Um, so uh, that, oh, here's another question. Could you offer multi-dev pricing per user instead of per site? You know, so we've thought about that um, and the, the challenge is that it's really, uh, it, the, the feature only makes sense on sites because even though you have a number of people potentially, you I mean, multi-dev is also, could be useful. If, I don't think it's quite as useful, but if there's only one person, still being able to fork off all these things could really help. But the point is that multi-dev is a very site-oriented feature. It's not like something where, because it, would, it wouldn't really work if you, know, you as an account had multi-dev, but one of your team members didn't. didn't. That wouldn't really work, and we haven't. We decided that we didn't want to have the complexity of a kind of an a la carte per seat pricing scheme on the sites. We just thought it made sense to say, you know, if you if you've got a team and you're building a site, this is just one of the many reasons you would want to upgrade to a, a, one of Pantheon's paid plans. It's not just you know because the value of Pantheon is really not just in the production hosting. That's the moment where you have to pay for it if you want to if you want to go there, but there's a whole lot of stuff that we can do for you to make your site much easier to build, much less likely to run into trouble, much more likely to launch on time and as a success. And we know now from a year of watching people use the platform that people who build on Pantheon have a much better time launching on Pantheon.
be on. The success rate of those types of projects is much higher than people who sort of come to us at the last minute and try to import something and then and then go live because you, for all the reasons we talked about at the beginning, you run into all these platform differences. And if you if you do it this way, I think you can save a lot of time and effort. And it makes sense for that to just be a part of the project budget for any any site. Great. So speaking about customer success stories, um, we no longer have any more questions. So um, how about we we just discuss a couple of our customer successes? Oh, sure. Yeah, we had a few more slides in there, mm -hmm. just so you can get a sense of what what else has been going on at Pantheon. Um, one we've talked about a, a bit before, and, and you can see that there's a there's a nice blog post from uh, from Matt Johnson on our uh, on our blog, the the the, the company that built the site. Um, this is a great uh, launch for us, where you know we had a um, some developers in Alley Interactive that we had a, previously had a good relationship with. They brought us you know some some big hairy sites before, and and we'd worked together to solve their problems, and, and they'd been successful. And they had a you know a, a relaunch of a, a major DC magazine that was going to have a exclusive interview with the president, and and they were going to be on TV and everything. It was a full court PR press, and so they really had like no flexibility on the launch date, but uh, they were really up against the wall in terms of getting everything done. And um, even before multi-dev, they were able to just by you know coordinating really tightly with their team, um, use the three environments of Pantheon, um, and that's what his blog post is about. It's it's pretty cool. Use the three environments of Pantheon to really just build everything there, and then you know we were able to launch them. You know, really working up to the last second, launch them at like 2 a.m. on Sunday before the Sunday morning news show cycle hit, and they got a hundred million page views in their first day. Um, which was a major success for them. I mean, they were they were in the New York Times, they were on the Huffington Post, they were everywhere, and it worked flawlessly. There was like one JavaScript bug that we helped them solve as like a kind of a quick fix um, at around noon. But other than that, it was totally totally smooth, and that was a huge win for them. Um, and tr and traditional hosting, you know, these guys have been in the game for a long time, and they they said like this is the kind of thing that goes horribly wrong <laughs> sometimes. And the whole one platform from day one thing really made that possible. Uh, and that was a that was a great great launch and great success story for us and, and we're we're fans of the the New Republic and of uh, Alley Interactive. Um, we have a, a another customer who's a, a winery here in California, and you know like a lot of companies that have different brands and projects, they don't have one website. I mean, they have a main website for their Kendall Jackson stuff, but then they have a, a dedicated website for each bottle of wine that they make because they all you know they're under different labels and so forth. Um, and they were in this in this process of like. They had, they'd had this like multi-site installation that was like really, you know, like a lot of multi-site installations ended up becoming more of a, much more of a, a challenge than it was a benefit. Um, and we were able to help them unwind that and use uh, some of the tools that we have for managing site portfolios on Pantheon. That's another a webinar for another day. But uh, we have, uh, you know, the, the site portfolio tools that we call Zeus, we're able to help them bring some sanity into their workflow, kind of get their I Turn turn their their internal IT department's really perspective on Drupal in general around completely from this is the worst thing ever we were forced to use this and it doesn't work to oh wow this is actually a very empowering technology and we're launching sites faster than ever before and we feel really good about it so that was definitely um, that was definitely a, a, a win for us and uh, and that's sort of following on the work that we began uh, more than a year ago with uh, University of California at Berkeley which is on our backyard. And, uh, and we had a, an early meeting with them where they were sort of expressing a similar frustration and pain, but on a, like a, a little bit of a larger scale. Because as a university, there are just tons and tons of people adopting Drupal organically. And then at the top end, the sort of people who are in charge of managing all of the Berkeley web stuff realized that they have to do something about this because they need to support all of their customers. And they, they realized that, you know, they had limited budgeted, limited resources. Um, the sort of internal infrastructure stuff at Berkeley wasn't really super friendly to, to running Drupal because they had a lot of stuff that was built on Solaris. It's you know, a great operating system for many things, but not the best for Drupal. Um, or at least it makes it very complicated to run Drupal. And they were looking at, you know, having to turn around and tell the math department that it was going to be, you know, eight hundred dollars a month just to run the the website for the math department, which is a little bit more than it probably should be. Um, and so we were able to, to get uh, get um, uh, really in, conceived of this Zeus plan to solve their problem, um, and it's been a big success. And they're they're sort of you know it's a, it is one of the success stories they have at the university of bringing in 
you know, being able to say, hey, this is something that Berkeley doesn't necessarily need to do. We've got a bunch of servers at Berkeley, but they'd be better used sequencing genes, running statistics projects, and doing research, which is really what that university is about. We don't need to, to sort of, you know, hold on to this web hosting thing. Similarly to the way a lot of universities are saying, we don't need to hold on to like delivering email for all of our students. We can just have Google do that for us and, and focus our resources on more valuable things for the, the university. So. Um, they're about halfway through to moving the, the initial wave of 600 sites, 100, like a little more than 100 of them are live. And there's another couple hundred that are in development. And then there's you know, sort of more showing up all the time. And it's, it's been a really great um, experience for them because they, you know, people using Drupal are happier, their IT team are happier, and we're, we're happy to have been able to use that as a learning experience to develop these tool sets called Zeus, again, to run the sort of platform portfolio uh, use case for Pantheon. And that's it. If there are no more questions, um, I want to thank you all for attending. And uh, please let us know what you think of MultiDev. And if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to tweet at us or use the contact form, and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.